Hello, my name is Andrea Brockhoff and I'm a medical student and I've been asked to perform an abdominal examination on you. It's just going to involve me having a look at your hands and look at your face, feel around your tummy and then a listen. Is that alright? Yep, that's okay. Okay, so can I just ask you to strip off into your underwear now? Okay, okay. I'm just going to start off by having a look at your hands now. And can I just get you to oppose your index fingers like this for me? Okay, that's fine, thank you. Okay, and if I can just get you to stick out your arms like this, cock back your wrists and spread your fingers. Okay, that's fine, thank you. Okay, I'm just going to have a look in your eyes now. If you could look up, I'm going to pull down on your eyes. Okay, look down for me. Okay, and let me have a look in your mouth. And underneath your tongue. Okay, that's fine, thank you. Do you have any pain at all in your tummy at the moment? No, I don't. Okay. I'm just going to do the same thing again, just press a little deeper. And if I can just get you to breathe in and out deeply when I say so. Okay, breathe in, and out, and in, and out, and in, and out. Okay, and the same thing again. Breathe in, and out, and in, and out, and in, and out. Okay. The um, evaluation for guarding and rebound tenderness. So guarding is going to be contraction of the abdominal muscles uh, um, against pain. It can be voluntary, uh, which can occur if your hand happens to be cold or the patient is ticklish, you'll feel the muscles contract. However, if there's significant peritoneal inflammation, then this guarding will be involuntary. When I go to press down on the abdomen, I will feel the firmness of the abdominal muscles and the patient won't be able to relax them. The way to be able to tell that this, is, um, that this palpation leading to guarding is actually involuntary is to do some relaxing maneuvers. So first, lift your hand there for a while so the patient gets used to the temperature. 
And you can also have the patient bend his legs. So you could bend your knees up for me. Both of them? Both of them, please. And that will, again, relax the abdominal muscles. If I press down and still feel the hardness of the muscle contraction, now we're looking at involuntary guarding. If you could relax your legs for me. The next we're going to look at is rebound tenderness. Rebound tenderness is pain with release of the pressure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press down on your abdomen, and you let me know if it hurts more when I'm pushing in or when I'm pushing out, or when I'm letting go, excuse me. So I push in and let go quickly. Where was there more pain? In. In. Okay. So that would be tenderness, but negative for rebound tenderness. So the next maneuvers I'm going to talk about are some more disease-specific maneuvers. Rebound tenderness and guarding is general peritoneal inflammation. It can be as a result of anything that leads to peritoneal irritation all the way to a frank peritonitis. We have some special maneuvers specific to, we'll start with appendicitis. So the first one is going to be Rosfing's sign, which is a referred rebound tenderness, and it's specific for appendicitis. So the appendix is generally in the right lower quadrant, if I do rebound tenderness by pushing down in the left lower quadrant, and I get rebound tenderness in the right associated with that, that is Rothsphinx sign. So again, I just push in and let go sharply and ask the patient where they felt more discomfort and where the discomfort was. A positive sign would be pain associated with rebound, but overly in the right as opposed to where I was palpating. Next one is going to be McBurney's point. So that is, again, specific point tenderness at the area of most commonly felt for the appendix. McPerney's point is found by finding the anterior iliac spine um, and, the abdom excuse me, and the umbilicus and drawing an imaginary line between the two. Approximately two inches from the iliac spine, or approximately a third of the way to the umbilicus on that imaginary line is McBurney's point. And I want to press down in that location and see if I elicit any pain or tenderness at that location. So these next two maneuvers are also for appendicitis. The first one is psoas sign. What I'm going to do is have the patient activate their psoas muscle, which will cause it to push up against the um, inflamed appendix and cause pain up in the abdomen. So in order to do that, I'm going to put pressure on the patient's thigh, on the right leg, just above his knee, and ask him to try and lift his leg up the table, so flex your hip and while I push down, and then relax. So that there was a negative psoas sign because it didn't elicit any pain. If it elicited pain, that would have been a positive psoas sign. The next one is obturator sign. What we're going to do is stretch that obturator muscle, and again, it'll rub up against the inflamed appendix. A positive sign would be eliciting pain. So this one, I'm going to do the motions. So I'm going to lift the patient's leg and do an external, excuse me, an internal rotation of the patient's hip. So I'm going to turn the lower leg outwards for an internal rotation. If po that was a negative sign because he had no pain. Positive would have been pain in the area of the right lower quadrant. So the next maneuver is actually for a different disease process, and this one is for um, acute cholecystitis or gallbladder inflammation. And this is Murphy's sign. So Murphy's sign is I'm pressing up against the area where the gallbladder is, I'm pressing in the area where I would normally do palpation of the liver. I ask the patient to take a deep breath. When the patient breathes in and lowers the liver up against my fingers, the inflamed gallbladder will hit my hand and will cause significant pain. Usually what happens then is, is then the patient abruptly stops breathing as a result of that pain that they're having, and that is a positive Murphy sign. So to do the maneuver, I'm going to press my fingers up at approximately the area of the midclavicular line and ask the patient to take a deep breath and relax. So the patient didn't have any, he has no gallbladder inflammation, he had no pain, he breathed, breathed smoothly, so that was a negative Murphy sign. If when I did that exact same maneuver, he halted or complained of significant pain during the maneuver, that would have been a positive Murphy sign. If the patient has any pain or discomfort, you want to make sure that you start palpating away from where that is and use that palpate in the area where there is any symptoms last. You want to use a sort of a, a rotating motion in each one of the four quadrants. You want to start with a light palpation and then move to a more deep palpation. So again, you can use just one hand or you can put the two hands together. And again, a superficial palpation, again, palpating to see if there's any pain or tenderness, but also do I feel any masses in that area. 
And then finally, a more deep palpation. The deep palpation will likely be slightly uncomfortable for the patient, but it should not be painful. Next, we want to be able to see if we can palpate both the spleen and uh, the liver edge. For the spleen, again, under normal circumstances, you won't be able to palpate the spleen. If there was any suggestion of splenic enlargement when you did percussion, this is your time to, to do for it. There are two different potential techniques for this. There's the one-handed or the two-handed technique. For the two-handed technique, you reach across the patient with your left hand and brace, have the patient relax into you and brace underneath and push from above. And again, here, I'm pushing up underneath the rib cage towards the area where the spleen should be located and ask the patient to inhale for me. And exhale. What you're doing under that moment is to see if it runs underneath your fingers, the tip of the spleen. You can also do this with a one-handed technique where you just place your hands underneath the rib cage and do the same thing. Could you take a deep breath for me? When the patient inhales, that brings the spleen down towards your fingers. And if there's enlargement, you have a higher chance of feeling it. If a patient has massive splenic enlargement, it may be lower in the abdomen. So take note of that from when you did your percussion. Next, we have palpation of the liver edge. Now, most normal patients, you can actually feel the edge of the liver since it's near the edge of the rib cage under normal circumstances. Same thing here, there are several techniques. You can come from above, excuse me, with both hands on the surface of the patient at the edge of the rib cage, pushing up underneath the edge of the rib cage and ask the patient to take a breath for you. And exhale. And as they exhale, you can feel the edge of the rib, excuse me, the edge of the liver moving underneath your fingers. It's not horrendously distinct, but it does have sort of a smooth, slightly more firm appearance. You can also use the hooking technique. I mean, whichever one you're more comfortable with is acceptable. And so here you take both hands, hooking them underneath the rib cage, and then again, asking the patient to take a deep breath. And exhale and you'll feel the edge of the liver run underneath your fingers. The same two-handed technique you use with the spleen is also acceptable, where you brace your hand underneath the patient and feel with your dominant hand or your right hand. Take a breath for me. And exhale. You don't need to use all three techniques. Use the technique that you're most comfortable with and that works for the patients based on their body habitus. So in addition to the palpation of the four quadrants, you also need to sometimes palpate some more distinct areas of the abdomen. So specifically the epigastrium, so patients who are having pain or you're concerned about issues associated with the stomach, we can palpate in the center up here. We can also palpate at the area of the umbilicus itself, as well as in the suprapubic location if you're looking for uh, tenderness or discomfort in the area of the bladder. So for inspection, you want to make sure, again, what's the shape of the abdomen? Is it scaphoid? Is it protuberant? Is it flat? Um, are there any scars from previous surgeries or accidents before? Is there any asymmetries, um, lesions on the skin? So this is what we're looking for in full inspection of the abdomen. And listen for the bowel sounds. with me. He's going to be checking you over. I'm just going to stay here and uh, just make sure everything's going smoothly. Okay, so I'm just going to examine you now. Uh, why don't you lie down? Okay, I'm going to take a peek at your face and I'm also going to look at the whites of your eyes and take a peek at your hands and your fingernails. Okay, and um, would you mind lifting up your gown for me? And I'll take a look at your abdomen as well. Okay, 
right, sounds normal. And I'm just going to have a feel and let me know if you feel any pain. Can you take a deep breath in for me, please? Okay, and out. And another deep breath in for me. And out. All right, thank you very much. I'm just gonna have a look at your handstand. So if you could put your arms out for me like this. And if you put your two index fingernails together like that. That's great. And if you turn your hands over. And if you turn your hands over again, extend your wrists all the way back and close your eyes. Great, thanks, Dan. And if you could raise your arms up for me. Okay, you can put your arms back down. Okay, Dan, I'm just going to have a look at your face. So if you just look straight ahead for me. And if you could pull your lower eyelid down with your finger. That's great. And if you look up at the same time. Okay, that's brilliant. I'm just going to stop doing that. And if you open your mouth and stick your tongue out and point it up in the air, that's fine. You can close your mouth, thanks. I'm just going to have a feel around your neck. Okay, I'm just going to have a feel of your tummy now, Dan. Tell me if you're in any pain. And I'm just going to press a little bit deeper this time. Can you take some deep breaths in and out for me now, Dan? That's great, keep going. I'm just going to feel the blood vessel in your tummy. I'm just going to tap on your abdomen. You roll over towards me. That's fine, you can line your back again. I'm going to have a listen to your tummy now, Dan.
than one right. of the doctors here. Would you mind if I examined no. your abdominal system? No, of course not. That'd no. be okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you could just lie lie there and relax for me. Right. What I'd like to do first, if you just hold your hands up, I'd just like to have a look at your hands. Okay, just turn them over for me. That's very good. And turn your hands back over again. That's good. Okay. And just relax. Relax now. Right, just, I'm just going to have a look in your eyes. Eh? Right. Just look up for me, please. That's good. Excellent. Now pop your tongue out. That's good. Say ah. Uh ah. -huh. And lift your tongue up. Very good. Okay. It's going to feel gently in your neck. That's fine. I need to just have a look at your tummy now, so if you could just lift your gown yeah. up. Yeah. We've covered you up with a blanket to preserve yeah. your modesty. Right. Okay. Oh, you've had an operation on the chest before? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so there's an old scar there, isn't there? Yes. Okay. Can you have, take a big cough for me, please? <coughs> okay. So there's nothing, no lumps appearing there. And what I'm going to do now is just have a gentle feel around your tummy. Right. Okay. Is it sore anywhere before we start? No. No. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just kneel down. Just tell me if it's sore at all, I'll be. That's fine. So I'm just going to press a little deeper now. Sure. Try and relax and just breathe normal. Yeah. Oh, I can feel some uh, pulsation there. Do you yes. have a Do you have an aneurysm? Yes. Yeah. We, yeah. You, we know that you have one. Of yes. That's right. Okay. So I can feel my fingers being pushed out by yes. you. Yes. Yes. That's right. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to feel through your liver now. Right. And uh, yeah. to do that, what I need you to do is just to take some. Deep breaths in and out uh, when I say so. I'm right, okay. Tell me at the same yeah. time. Okay. So a deep breath in, please. And out. <sighs> That's good. And again. And out. <sighs> and again. And out. <sighs> and out. In. Out. <sighs> Once more. <sighs> Very good. Okay. Just breathe normally. Right up on your ribs there, and suddenly obviously dull there, just at the costal margin. And then it becomes dull there at the level of the nipple. And I'm going to do the same thing but feel the other way for the, for the spleen this time. Alright. A deep breath. And out. That's good. And again. Once more. There we go. If you could just roll over towards me a little. A bit more. No, that's good. And deep breath. In. Very good. Okay, just relax back again. Right, I'm just going to feel around here and see if I can push any kidney forward. That, right. feels, that feels fine there. So I'm just going to, and again, just going to push around the back of your flank. Yeah. Push forward, see. Feels okay. Okay. And could you cough again for me? That's good. And then I'm just going to have a, a listen to your tummy. Right. Listen to the sounds that your bowels are making. Okay. And that seems to be gurgling away quite normally. And of course, what I'd normally do is uh, is complete the examination uh, by examining your rectum. Right. Of course, we won't put you through that on the video. <laughs> okay. G. Patron's contractures, palmar erythema, or any other signs of liver disease.
Can I ask you to extend your hands out for me and bring your hands back? Looking for a flat. Thank you. That's great. Okay. Moving up now to the head and the neck. We're going to look at the eyes. First of all, could you look up for me? Looking in the gutters for any pallor, looking for actress, the jaundice of the sclera, and any xanthalasma. Could you open your mouth for me? Looking again for central cyanosis, any ulcers, abnormal pigmentations, or other signs in the mouth. Okay, moving down now in our inspection, looking again at the chest, noting the body here, any gynecomastia, or more spider nevi on the trunk. Moving down now, we come to inspection of the abdomen itself. The things that we're looking for here are any abnormal distinction, any masses, any distended veins, or any abnormal pulsations. Now we move on to the palpation of the abdomen. And for this, it's important to get down on your knees so that you're at the right level for palpation. So now we move on to our palpation of the abdomen. Starting with palpation with light touch, asking the patient if they've got any areas of tenderness. Have you got any tenderness in your tummy? No. Can you let me know if anywhere's tender? Okay. Lightly palpating in each of the nine areas of the abdomen. Now to move on to our deep palpation, we'll firstly be palpating for the liver, starting in the right iliac fossa. Could you take a deep breath in and out for me please? Okay, study again in the right iliac fossa, moving diagonally over to the left hypochondrium to feel for any enlarged spleen. Again, you take deep breaths in and out for me. Good. Next, we move on to palpating for the kidneys. If I could just move your arm. You need to get one arm under, underneath the patient, one hand on top, and you gently try to blot the kidneys upwards and feel between your hands for any enlargement. And again, over to the other side. Okay, finally, palpate for any aortic aneurysm. Next, moving on to percussion. Firstly, I'm trying to percuss out the liver, starting from well below. and noting where the bottom edge of the liver is. And cussing down the top edge of the liver, making a note of the size. And palp cuss again with the left hypochondrium. Finally, cuss for shifting dullness. Cussing in the flank, the note of which should be resonant. If there's any dullness in the flank, ask the patient to roll over on the left hand side. And percuss again to ensure the dullness has shifted. Right, finally we auscultate the abdomen. Now we can ask a patient to sit forward. Would you want to sit up for me? With your 
with the patient sitting forward, inspect the back for any renal scars and auscultate for any renal bruise. While the patient is sitting forward, we can complete our examination by feeling for any cervical lymphatic 